He's won some of the biggest cases in Charleston and around South Carolina. In this edition of Quintus Close-Ups, I speak exclusively with attorney Getney Howell III. And be sure to download the free Quintus Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Mr. Getney Howell III, it is so good to meet you. Glad to be here. I appreciate it greatly. So we're sitting in your iconic office right here on Chalmers Streets in downtown Charleston. And I know that you are a prominent attorney here in this town. And you have successfully, you know, taken on a lot of cases around Charleston and around the state. And from what I read recently in a newspaper article, you basically said this quote, as I get older, I get harder cases. Tell me, now that you're much older now, how many cases are much harder for you as an attorney? Well, the harder meaning the difficult not clear cut, they can go either way. And so when you get involved, you want to have the ability to influence the outcome, not just go through the motions, but to actually influence what direction the case goes. And when you're a little older and you got a little bit of history behind you, that history comes in handy in terms of how to take a the case and make it a winner. And you talk about history. Let me take you back to the time when you joined your uh, father uh, with the law firm. What was that like in your experience from an emotional standpoint? Best time of my life. I mean, he was a wonderful guy. He was a great daddy. He was a father and law partner and a friend all at the same time. Okay. And from the time that you started out working with your father in the law firm business to now, what is the biggest difference about law in your mind? The law hadn't changed so much as the law business has changed. Um, the biggest change has been advertising. Mm. And when I started, it just didn't advertise. It was a court cool against the law to advertise. Mm. And so referrals all came by word of mouth. And you went out into the community and worked hard, developed a good reputation, and with that good reputation came additional business. Today, the advertisers are who you're in competition with. And so to be successful, you have to devote a certain amount of time and energy to the advertising world, and that's just the reality of where we are. You talk about reputation. You have a tremendously good reputation here in Charleston. What is it like to be you? Sometimes it's hard work, but mostly it's pretty pretty damn fun. Enjoy it. The people I work with, enjoy the people I work against. They're professional people and have good reputations and are excellent, smart people, and are worthy adversaries. And try to make your, your client a winner in the, in, against very formidable people. And, you know, when you talk about people and obviously Charleston, there's so much changes going on in the city of Charleston as we sit here right now. Where does your mind go to about the future of Charleston? Unlike anybody else, it's, it's, it's traffic and parking. And if they can solve those problems, Charleston will continue to thrive. But people... Talk about change in a negative way. You know, they look at a, a, a neighborhood and say, damn, this place has changed. And I disagree with that. I think the answer is, man, this place has changed. You know, that, that a lot of changes have been made in Charleston. The great majority of them, thanks to me and Riley, have been positive changes. The community benefits from them in the short run and in the long run. And I'm glad to be around while it's happening. And when you, you talk about what's happening, uh, there's, as you mentioned, a lot of things going on, traffic and parking, but also there's talk about flooding and infrastructure. I think that the political people are being trying to be proactive to be problem solvers, but the problems are coming up, sort of coming out in fast and furious, and they seem to be overwhelmed right now by the uh, flooding problems and, and the parking problems. I think they'll get it right, but I think it's going to take some time. Right. And you talk about time. Obviously, you've just, you know dealt with a lot of cases in, within your law firm. Might be a tough question, but how many cases have you been successfully able to you know accomplish? Couldn't couldn't. Be. <laughs> couldn't be. I'd like to tell you that I won a lot more than I've lost, mm. but I can't say I haven't lost any. Wow, wow. What is one particular case that still plays in your mind today? Lucas case was an important case involving beachfront property. Oh yeah. 
and I did try the lupus case, and that was an important case, and it's still an important case. Um, so I'd say probably the lupus case. Oh yeah, and when you look at you know obviously your law firm in the future, where does your mind go to with that? I got two boys. One's in law school, and one's getting ready to go to law school. My my future is in those boys. Mm. When you look back at your career to now, what do you hope people will say about getting out third? Hard worker, good guy, honest fellow. Yeah, that's so great to hear. Well, get me out the third. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. You're welcome.